Hi everyone. This video will help you um, get started with the material in Chapter 5, um, Section 5.2, where you start to do applications of the normal distribution. Okay, so I'm going to show you how, if I, if you were taking this class, you know, on ground with me, how I would show all the work, um, including drawing a picture for each one of these. So we've got this example where we're given the mean amount of ice cream consumption um, is 20.7. So the first thing I always am going to do there is I'm going to go over on the side. I'm going to say, I know my mu is 20.7 because I'm going to use this over and over again. And my standard deviation is 4.2. Okay. So after that, okay, so the first thing I want to do, what percent of people eat for part A less than 19 pounds? Okay, so I'm really looking for... The percent of people is really just another words of saying, um, another way of saying what's the probability that I'm going to randomly pick a person and they're going to have eaten less than 19 pounds per year. So I'm really looking for this. The probability that X is going to be, the amount of ice cream is going to be less than 19 pounds for that person that I pick. Okay, so my next thing I'm going to do, because I want to be able to use either the standard normal table or my calculator, is I'm going to rewrite that as a z-score. I'm going to go below, so what I'm doing is I'm going to find the correlating z-score, so 19 as an x is what as a z, that's what I'm doing. So I usually go below and say, okay, here's my z-score, it's my x value minus the mean. I'm trying to figure out how many standard deviations above or below the mean I am, okay? Okay, so I already did that ahead of time, and that ends up, that z ends up being a negative 0.40 when I round to two decimal places. So it makes sense that it's negative because the mean, the average is 20.7, and I'm looking and I'm converting a 19 um, to a z-score. So I'm below the mean, so it should be negative. So let's look at what this is as a picture. Okay, so let me just box this off. So that's my z-score. Okay. Before I find this probability of z being less than negative 0 0.40, let's draw it out so you can see if your answer makes sense. So I've got my standard normal. If I'm using a z-score, it means I've got a center of 0 because I've standardized it. So I, if my z is negative 0.4, it means I'm only just about a half a standard deviation below the mean. So just it doesn't really matter if I'm exactly right on, but I should be below the mean because that's a z of negative 0 0.40, say. And I want the probability of z being less than that, so I'm shading this area. So the reason I do this for every single example is because then I know if I have the right area or not, the correct area. This area I want to the left of negative 0.40. So if you think about the whole picture is 1. The area of the whole under the curve is 1. So half of it is from 0 and below. So this should definitely be below 50%, meaning my probability should be below 0.50. So at this point, you're either going to use your table it's a nice area to the left, so you wouldn't have to use the complement. Or use the calculator, which I showed it, I um, posted another video for that. So either way you do it, you're going to find the probability of z being less than negative 0 0.40 to be about, and I'm going to round this to four decimal places, the z-score you usually give just to 2. Okay, so that pertains to that area. Okay, it makes sense. We said it should be below 0.5, and it is. So we're really saying, in the beginning, they wanted to know it as a percentage. If I just wanted a probability, well, I'd be done here. But since they asked me for a per percent, that means it's about 34.46% of people would eat less than 19 pounds of ice cream. Okay, so we're just going to keep doing this. The next few parts of this are just doing this same kind of thing over and over. So let's look at the next. Okay, so now I want the probability of x being more than 16. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to say, well, what is 16 as a z-score? So I'm just going to rewrite it as a z-score. So I'm going to come over here and do my work. I'm going to say, okay, my z would be my x value first minus the mean, which was 20.7, over 4.2. So again, I'm below the mean. My x value is below the mean, so this better come out negative. And if you do that calculation, just be careful on the calculator because if you do it on the calculator all in one step, this has to be in parentheses so that it does the subtraction and then divides the whole thing by 4.2 in the end. Okay, so this comes out to be about negative 1.12. So let's look at it as a picture. So that's our z-score. The difference between this one and the last one 
Both these scores happen to be negative, but that does not determine if I'm shading to the right or to the left. What determines which way I'm shading is these inequalities right here. So this is m probability more than. So I'm below the mean. Let's say about here I'm negative 1.12 standard deviations below the mean, which is not an abnormal, abnormal value. We know that within two standard deviations it's pretty normal. But I'm shading this way to the right because I want the chances to be more than 16. Um, so this, when I shade, do that, draw that picture, I can see, okay, my probability better come out to be more than 0.5 just from looking at my picture. So if you do that, this area, again, do this on either on the calculator or using your table, but if you use your table, when you look up negative 1.12, you have to do the complement because we want the right-hand area, and the table always gives the left. This comes out to be about 0.8686. Okay, so that's the area of that. So that's really what this is. That's the probability of getting picking a person, or this is really the percent of people, so that means it's about 86.86% of people would eat more than 16, which makes sense because the average is 20.7. So we, we would expect more than 50% of people to eat more than 16 pounds of ice cream. Okay, so next is between two things. Okay, so what is the probability that X is, that I pick a person and they eat between 13 and 22 pounds? So the only difference is now I need to convert two things to Z scores. Okay, so I'm going to convert that to a Z and that to a Z using the same method I did before. So when you convert 13, meaning you am going to go over here on the side, let's see. Um... Let me just show the work I'm doing. I'm doing 13 minus 20.7 over 4.2. And then I'm going to do 22 minus... So that one's going to be above the mean. So that is the first one right now that we've had that's positive. So these two values come out to be a negative 1.83 and a 0.31. So if I look at this on a picture... So here's my 0... This one's below the mean, almost two standard deviations below the mean. And this one's just, really, it's probably even closer to the zero. I probably exaggerate it a little bit. But it's not even a half a standard deviation above the mean. And I'm trying to find the area in between here. Okay, so that one is actually, when you, if you watch that video on how to do um, normal CDF on the calculator. On the calculator, my endpoints, if I did normal CDF, Remember, that's under distributions above um, VARs. I would go, I want the area from one, negative 1 1.83 to 0 0.31. That's my endpoints, okay? And if I did that, my area, same thing as my probability, those are the same thing, would come out to be about 0 0.5881. Okay, so we would have about a 58.81% chance of choosing a person and having them eating between 13 and 22 pounds. In other words, 58.81% of people eat between those two amounts. Okay. And then the last one is if someone eats 20... Okay, so this one, last one we're going to do here... Um, we're looking for if someone eats 25 pounds of ice cream per year, what percentile are they in? So the first thing I'm doing with this one is I'm looking at that word percentile, and I'm you're gonna you have seen that word in back in chapter two, and that should always mean to you area to the left. Okay, when we talk about what percentile we're in, we're really talking about the percentage of people that fall below us. Okay. So step one I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to convert this x value, this x value of 25, I'm going to convert it into a z-score. And you see it's going to come out positive because I'm above the mean. Okay, I'm above average in this case, so I should really be above the 50th percentile in the end. So my z is 1.02. So let's draw it. Okay, so we know we're right here. Here's 0, here's 1.02. And so the reason I'm going to shade this way is because I'm looking for percentile, which I'm looking for the percentage of area to the left of me. 
okay? And that's always the case with percentile, all right? I, I'm eating above average, so I should be a pretty big, in, the, in the, a pretty high percentile, okay? So this would be a quick one to just look up on your table because it's area to the left, so it's exactly what the table gives you. If you're doing it on the calculator, you would do a normal CDF. Okay, you have to always put in two endpoints. Now the endpoint on the left, make sure you watch this video that I posted for this. I, my area here is really kind of going off to a negative infinity, but I can't put negative infinity in. So we kind of say that negative 10 is really close enough to negative infinity as far as standard deviations. Being 10 standard deviations below the mean is so far out there that we use that really as our negative infinity. So I want the area from negative infinity all the way up to 1.02. Okay, if you do that, either one, if you, on a table or the calculator, it comes out to be about 0.8461. Okay, so we're really in about the 84, you'd have to, for this question, if you were to see this on my stat lab, you would really look to see how they want you to round. I'm going to say you're between the 84th and 85th percentile. Sometimes they'll say you, oh, I'm, let me get rid of that. I'm not percent, I really want to word this as percentile. Look to see if they want you to round to the nearest whole percentile. Um, so that will tell you. If I had to round to the nearest whole, I would say you're in the 85th, although you're not technically quite in the 85th because you're not quite there. Okay, but 84th to 85th percentile, that's right about where we are. Okay, so each of these examples, we showed one that was shaded to the left, shaded to the right. We had some positive z-scores. We had some negative z-scores. So hopefully you've got a kind of a feel. You're going to you're gonna see once you start doing these examples that everyone is, is pretty much the same. And one of the key things is to show that work with your picture. Draw it and shade it so you can kind of get an idea. I know this 84th, 85th percentile makes sense because of the picture that I drew. I knew it should be pretty, should be well above the 50th percentile. Okay, so hopefully that helps with that section. Have a good week.